Welcome back to the Simulator Series. In today's episode, we are going to be implementing the VIP system as well as the VIP Game Pass. Now, as usual, if you enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button. And if you want to support me or gain access to all the scripts and the game file we make during this episode, there's a link down below in the description to my Patreon, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's hop right into it. Now, hopping directly into Studio to begin implementing this into our game, we're going to begin by scripting this on the server side. Before we do that, though, we're actually going to add a brand new remote function to handle some networking that's going to be required for implementing the system. So we're going to go inside of the replicated storage, inside of the remotes folder and we're going to add a brand new remote function now we're going to call this remote function get vips in addition to that remote function we're also going to add a remote event and this is going to be called vip join now if it wasn't obvious the way that we're going to be using these remotes well we'll start off with the remote function whenever a player joins our game we're going to use this get vips from the client and we'll basically be asking the server for all the current vips that are in the game and then once we get all the vips that are currently in the game we'll store all those players in a list again on the client side and then for the vip join remote event we're going to be firing this from the server side anytime a new VIP player actually joins. So when we listen to this on the client side, whenever a brand new VIP user joins, we will also add that player to the list as well. So now that we have those two remote events created, let's actually begin scripting this on the server side. So we're going to go inside of the server script service, and we're going to actually add a brand new script to this. This script is going to be called VIP, and we're going to need to get a couple of services inside of here. So we're going to want to get the server script service, the replicated storage, and the player service as well. Now, once we get all of those, we're going to want to create a variable for the player data manager. So local player data equals require server script service dot player data dot manager. Now that we have the player data manager, we're also going to get the shop config as well as this handles game passes. So require replicate storage dot configs dot shop. Now that we have that config, we're also going to want to create a variable for our remote events. So we're going to say local remotes equals replicated storage dot remotes. And now that we've done that, we're going to create another variable, which is going to be called VIP players. And that's going to be equal to an empty table. Now we're going to use this variable to store all of the players in our game, which have purchased the VIP game pass. So let's actually begin by scripting when a player joins the game. We'll check if they've purchased the VIP game pass and if they have, we will add them to this list. So using the player data manager, we have the profile loaded bindable event and we're going to listen to that event and connect it with an anonymous function. Now this bindable event is going to give us the player as well as their data. And the first thing that we'll do is check if they own the VIP game pass. So we'll create a variable called owns game pass and that's going to be equal to the shop config that does player own game pass. And the game pass that we're going to check if they own is the VIP game game pass and then we also want to pass through the player's data as well now if the player does own the game pass then what do we want to do well we want to add that player to our vip players table so we'll say table.insert the table that we want to insert to is the vip players table and we want to insert the player's user id into that table now that we've added this player to the table we also want to replicate to all the clients in our game and let them know that hey this vip player has just joined our game and we can do that by using the remote event that we actually created earlier so we're going to say remotes.vip joined we're going to use the fire all clients method and we're going to pass through the player's user id to all of the clients and that's actually all we have to do for handling when a vip player joins our game and the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we remove the player from that list anytime they leave the game and the easiest way to do that is by listening to the player removing event of the player service so we'll connect this to an anonymous function and what are we going to get from this well we of course are going to get the player and now we want to check if the player that's leaving is stored inside of the vip players table so we're going to create a variable called index and then we'll use the table.find method on the VIP players table, and we're going to attempt to find the player's user ID inside of that table. Now, if index is not nil, then that means that this player is inside of that table. So if we manage to find that player inside of the table, we now want to remove them from that table. So we're going to use the table.remove method on the VIP players table, and we want to remove the index from that table. Awesome. So now we're cleaning up the table and preventing any possible memory leaks. And now the last thing that we need to do inside of this script is implement that remote function that we also created at the beginning as well. Remember, that remote function is going to be used for whenever a player first joins the game. They're going to contact the server and basically ask who are all the VIP players that are currently in the game. So we're going to say remotes.getVIPs that on server invoke and we're going to set that equal to an anonymous function and all we're going to do inside of this function is return the vip players variable awesome so now that we've done that we're entirely finished with the script and we can now move over to scripting this on the client side so what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the starter player inside of the starter player scripts and we're going to create a brand new local script inside of here we're going to rename this local script 
be called VIP. Inside of here, we're going to want to get a couple of services. So we'll start off by getting the players, the replicated storage, and the text chat service. We'll also create a variable for our remote events, so replicated storage.remotes. We also want to get the player state manager, so require replicated storage.client.state. And now the next thing that we're going to do is create a constant variable. This variable is going to be called chat prefix string, and we're going to set this to a specific string, which we'll use to modify how a player's chat message is displayed in the chat. Now, in many games, if a player has purchased the VIP game pass, usually their name will be prefixed with some text that says VIP. In addition to having that prefix, the prefix also might be colored as well. So let's first start off by creating the prefix that's usually displayed before the player's name. So to begin creating this prefix, we're going to type square brackets. Inside of these square brackets, we're going to type the word VIP. And then after that, we're going to add an emoji to this. Now, if you don't know how to easily add emojis, if you are on Windows 10 or Windows 11, you should be able to use the Windows key and the period button. And then it should pop up this little emoji tab for you right here. And then I'm just going to use the crown emoji. Now, if this method doesn't work for you, you can always Google an emoji website and then you could just copy and paste it directly from that website as well. So now that we've created our basic prefix, which is going to appear before the player's name, whenever their message is displayed in chat, we also want to add some color to this as well. Now, before we add color to this, I think it's worth me explaining that the string that we're creating right now is going to be used as rich text. If you're familiar with rich text, pretty much any instance that you create in Roblox that contains text, such as text labels or other things like that, will have a property on them called rich text. And when you enable that property, that allows us to use simple markup tags to style set of a string. So for instance, we could style them in bold, italics, underline, fill color, stroke variations, and much more. And since we're on the official documentation, we even have an example here showing us how we can make a specific part of a string bold. Now we can see inside of the string, we're using a less than sign, then we have the letter B, and then to the right of that, we have a greater than sign. And what this B stands for is bold. So this part of the string right here is where we begin the bold style. Now we can refer to this as an opening tag. And the reason that we're referring to this as an opening tag is because everything that we include in this string after the opening tag and before this closing tag will have its style affected. So now looking at the closing tag, we can see it's pretty much the same exact thing as the opening tag. The only difference here is that it actually has a slash and the slash specifically indicates that this is a closing tag. Now that's just a quick and basic lesson on rich text. If you want to learn more about this, I'll leave a link down below in the description of this specific documentation page. And of course you can feel free to do your own research. So now that we have a very basic understanding of rich text, let's go ahead and add a tag inside of here, which will allow us to modify the color. Now, in order to modify the color, we're actually going to use a font tag, and this font tag can actually be given some arguments. So one of the arguments that we can pass to it is the color argument. And now what we're going to set the color argument two is hashtag FFFF00. And now that we've also added that color argument, we also need to make sure that we include the greater than sign so that we can actually create that tag. And now that we've created that tag, everything after that tag will now have its style modified by that. And now the last thing that we need to do is add the closing tag as well. And to add the closing tag, all we have to do is say less than slash font and then the greater than symbol. And now we fully added the markup tag to this. Now, if you're confused by the color that we passed to this, for the color argument, we use the hex version of the color. There's actually a ton of different ways that we can specify a specific color in code. For instance, we have hex, we have RGB, we have CMYK, HSV, and even HSL. Now, if we look at RGB, which is probably the most common way, we can see that the numbers are 255, 255, 0. So if we wanted to use RGB instead of hex, all we'd have to do is replace the hex information that we added here and say RGB. Then we'll add an opening bracket, and then we can say 255, 255, 0 and then just add the closing bracket. And now that we've done that, we're using our be instead of hex. Anyways, now that we're completely done with learning about rich text and everything like that, we can move on and finally get back to actually scripting the VIP system. So the next variable that we want to create is called VIP players, and that's going to be equal to an empty table once again. And this variable is going to be used the exact same way that we use it on the server side. Now, the first thing we'll do inside of here is create a function called set VIPs. This is not going to have any parameters. And inside of here, we'll create a variable called VIPs, and we're going to set the value of this by using the get VIPs remote function that we created earlier. So we'll say remotes get VIPs, invoke server, and now if there are any VIPs, then we want to loop through that table of VIPs and add each of those user IDs to our VIP players table. So we'll say for underscore user ID in VIPs do. Then we'll use table dot insert and we'll insert into the VIP players table the user's ID. Perfect. And now that we've created that function, we can also go ahead and call it. After we've done that, we're going to create a new function. This is going to be called VIP player joined. And for the, and the parameter of this is going to be the user's ID, which of course is a number. Now, whenever 
Europe VIP player has joined our game, all we want to do is add that player's user ID to our VIP player's table. So we'll simply say table.insert, and of course, we'll insert the player's user ID into the VIP player's table. And now that we've created this function, we can go ahead and actually use it. And when are we going to use it? Well, we're actually going to use it by listening to that VIP joined remote event that we created earlier. So we're going to say remotes.vipjoined.onClient event, and we're going to connect it to the VIP player join function. Now that we've done that, we also have to make sure that we clean up any VIP player that has left the game as well. So we're going to say players.playerremoving, and we're going to connect this to an anonymous function, which is going to accept a player as a player. And this function is going to have the exact same logic that it had on the server side. So we're going to say local index equals table.find. We're going to look through the VIP player's table for the specific player's user ID. If we're able to find that player inside of there, then we're going to want to remove that player from that table. So we'll say VIP players, and we want to remove that specific index from the table. Cool. So now that we're handling all of that properly, the next thing that we need to set up is modify the player's text chat messages to incorporate that prefix inside of there as well. Now, in order to do this, we're going to use the text chat service and we're going to listen to the message received event and we'll connect this to an anonymous function, which is going to accept a text chat message, which is of the text chat message type. Now, from the text chat message, we're actually going to want to get the source. And in order to get the source, there is actually a text source property on the text chat message. Now, if we are able to get that source, then we know that this is actually a player. And since we know that this is a player, we also know that the text source contains a property called user ID, which we can use to identify the specific player who sent this message. So we'll create a variable called user ID, which is going to be equal to the source dot user ID. Now that we've determined what user sent this message, we want to check if they are VIP. So we'll create a variable called is VIP, and that's going to be equal to table dot find. We're going to look through the VIP players table, and we're going to look for that specific user ID. Now, if the player is a VIP, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to modify a property of the text chat message. The property that we want to modify is actually the prefix text property. And what we'll actually set this to is a string, which first displays the chat prefix string, and then we'll include a space. And then after that, we'll actually include the original text chat message dot prefix text. So we're still preserving what the prefix text originally was. And all we're simply doing is prefixing the original prefix text with our chat prefix string. Now there's actually one more thing that we need to do in order for this to actually work. And that's actually enabling the brand new text chat service. If you've been following the series since we originally started it, Roblox has pretty much revamped the entire text chat service. So if your experience is old enough, you might not have actually automatically enabled the new text chat service. In order to do this, we're going to go to the model tab. We're then going to click on the service button right here, and then we want to insert the text chat service. Now, once we insert the text chat service, we can actually see it appear towards the bottom of our Explorer. And when we click on it, we can see some properties that actually appear. We want to update the chat version property to be set to the text chat service. And now that we've done that, we can go into our game and test this out. So hopping directly into our game, let's go ahead and type out the message, hey. And we see that when we type out the message, hey, our name is actually prefixed with V. VIP. We have the crown. That's all in yellow. And then we can see our message right there as well. So that's looking great. Now, in addition to the chat prefix, players also receive a plus 25% increase to their luck. Now, how do we implement this? Well, we'll go inside of the replicated storage inside of the utils folder and open up the stats module script. Inside of here, we have a luck multiplier function, and we can see how we implement the lucky game pass as well as the super lucky game pass. Now, all we're going to do is go ahead and copy and paste one of these. Instead of the variable being called owns lucky game pass, we'll call this owns VIP game pass. The game pass that we're going to be looking for is called VIP. And then we want to make sure that we update this variable right there. Now, like I said, their luck is increased by 25%. So we'll add plus 0.25 to the multiplier. And that's all that we have to do. So we'll save that script. And now the player's luck will be increased by 25% whenever they hatch an egg, as long as they have the VIP game pass. Now, since we began using the new text chat service, we also have to update another system as well. The system that we have to update is when we notify all the players in our game, when a player hatches a really rare pet. Now, in order to make this really easy to debug, I'm going to go to the server script service inside of the egg server script and inside of the hatch function, if we scroll pretty much all the way down. We're going to see if the hatch chance is less than or equal to five. We fire off this hatch chat remote event. I'm simply going to change the number to 100 so that this will fire off for every single pet that we hatch just so that we can easily test this out. Now, to begin updating the system, we actually have to go inside of the starter player, inside of the starter player scripts, inside of the GUI folder and open up the eggs local script. Inside of here, we want to create a variable 
variable for the text chat service. And then we want to go down all the way to the bottom of the script. We can see that we actually listen to the hatch chat remote event. And then this is how we handle displaying the message in chat. Since we're using the new text chat service though, this is no longer going to work. So we're going to remove this part of the function right there. And now what we're instead going to do is use the text chat service. And when the text chat service loads up in our game, it's going to actually create a child called text channels. Now that child is going to hold multiple different text channels that are actually available to us in our game. And by default, we actually have a text channel called RBX system. And we want to use that text channel to display this message. So we're going to say RBX system, and we want to use a specific method of that specific text channel. And that method is actually to display system message. And now this method simply takes a string that we want to display in the chat. Now, similar to when we modify the text chat message for setting up the VIP system, this chat message also uses rich text as well. So in order to make our message appear with a specific color, we have to update this function a little bit more. Now, going to where we set the color variable, instead of setting it to a color three dot from RGB, what we're actually going to do is just create a string with all of these numbers inside of it, just like that. And we'll do that for our other color as well. Cool. So now the color variable is set to a string rather than an actual color object. Now going inside of our display system message method call, what we're going to do is add a brand new string inside of here. And we're going to start the string off by adding some markup to it. So we're going to say font, we'll then say color, and we'll set that equal to something. And what we'll do is add surrounding quotation marks here. And then we'll say RGB, and then we'll have surrounding parentheses. And inside of those surrounding parentheses is actually where we want to include our color variable. And then after the closing quotation mark, we also have to add a greater than symbol to close off that markup element. After we've closed that off, we then want to include the text inside of here as well. And then we need to make sure that we add closing tag inside of here as well. So we'll say less than slash font and then the greater than symbol as well. And now that we've done that, we can go into our game and test this out. So popping directly into our game, let's go ahead and hatch a pet. And once we hatch a pet, we can actually see monster dev hashed a bunny with a 8.25% chance. So now that's working perfectly. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do is go back to the egg script on the server side and revert that number from 100 back to what we had it previously, which was five. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that all being said, that's going to be it for this episode. As always, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button. And if you want to support me or gain access to all the scripts and the game file that we made during this episode, there's a link down below the description of the Patreon and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.